left out under God and individual because they needed to cut two seconds out of the is what they said so they left under God and individual out so that's an NBC news or NBC sports version mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, any agenda additions uh, Mr. Johnson yes I have one uh, I have one to make an uh, addition to the agenda alright let's uh, vote or uh, to make an addition to the agenda. To expand the agenda, second. Yeah, I'll second his motion to expand the agenda regarding the appointments. Fresh vote. Oh no, wait a minute. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Again. <laughs> no, no, that's supposed to be yes. yes. It should be yes. 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 Yeah. And when we get down to it, you can tell us what it, what it is. Okay. We, we need a, a motion to add it to the You've expanded now. Yeah. We need to add it to the agenda. Okay. We need a motion to uh, add it to the agenda. Yes, oh, motion to make motion. Motion. Second. Second. Add it to the agenda. Second by Mr. Lynn. Cash vote, please. All right. 7 0 in favor. Special resolutions. Do I mean, sir? All right. Citizens' comments. Uh, when you come up, you'll have, please give us your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes to uh, make your comment. Uh, I see we have Biz Camp, so we'll start with that group. Uh, Biz Camp folks, come on up. Go under visitors. Mm -hmm. Start to comment. Oh, we're going to do you under visitors. Okay. Uh, oh. <coughs> Uh, Helen Adger. Ms. Adger, we're, we're going to be under visitors, I'm sorry. We'll be under visitors. Ms. Adger. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, glad to see all of you. My representative, Mr. Dominic, my friend, Todd Hopkins, Mr. Wilson, I nice see you. I'm representing the village of... Well, your name and address, please. Helen Adger, Gillum, Louisiana. Right, and put the microphone down just a little bit. There we go. Thank you, Todd. Both cases have Thank you. Oh, sure. I'm Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm representing the village of Gillum, and uh, we have requested a rural representative on the library board. We have eight libraries north of Shreveport in our rural areas, and we would like very much to be represented on the library board. We have very active libraries, and those libraries are provided to the libraries free of charge, maintenance free, utilities free, and we're glad, very glad to have them. But we also would appreciate very much a representative of the rural areas on the board. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> Neil Johnson? Yeah. Yeah, this is a. This is a guy that I was recommending. I was asking him to come and tell us who he is. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Neil Johnson. My name is Belcher, Louisiana. Mayor Andrew nominated me to be the real representative of the library board. I believe you all have my resume. You can see what my qualifications are. And basically, I just want to meet you and let you see me. And, and uh, if you have any questions to ask or the, uh, anything you want to know in addition, I'll say I'm glad to answer your questions. Anybody? Okay. Just, I you know, recommended uh, 
Miss Andrews has been a, um, a crusade of trying to get a, a rural appointment for years. Uh, this has been in the uh, makes for several years, so hopefully it goes through. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Lynch, who's been working on this for quite some time when she was president. Uh, and, you know, luckily, it was able to come through with uh, Ken Epperson. What we actually had was one of our rural appointments, Miss Doris Lynch, has resigned from the parish and become a city appointment, which leaves a vacancy uh, for us. I'm, I'm assuming, Todd, y'all got the resignation or something. Um, make this happen um, and um, I just want to ask Mr. Johnson to come down here to tell us who he is and why he wanted to be appointed to the board and be sure that y'all had a resume and see if any of y'all's commissioners had, a, had any questions for Mr. Johnson. All right, Ms. Lynch. Thank you Mr. Johnson for um, stepping up and wanting to be a part of the library board. Uh, I served on the library board for five years prior to elected office. And I think maybe a year or two after, but, um, you know, it's certainly a, an excellent board uh, to be a part of, very important uh, part of our community, the library system. Now, the ALA conference is in New Orleans this year. Have you talked with Dr. Heason about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it's passed. If it hasn't, it should be coming up really soon. Uh, so if you can get with him as soon as possible to see if it's possible that you can attend. Of your schedule allows mm -hmm. to make sure. that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, uh, visitors. This uh, camp. Uh, yes, we have uh, Mr. Thaddeus Pew and Ms. Lena Livingston, director of this camp. <coughs> Livingston. Good afternoon. My name is Lena Leviston. I live at 757 Bernard Boulevard in Shreveport, Louisiana. My zip code is 71106. This is our 11th year with this camp. And this is our 11th year to come to you to say thank you for your support of our organization. As you know, uh, our motto in, in uh, this camp, in the ICE office rather, because this camp is uh, run by the Edgewood City Entrepreneurial Institute. And our motto is that entrepreneurs are not born, that they are grown, and we do so through this camp. We have a number of success so stories that we can brag on, but we don't have the time. I want to introduce to you my staff, and after which one of the students will come and give you special thanks. The staff includes Ms. Cassandra Howard, who is a teacher at uh, Fair Park High School, a marketing coordinator. And if you're staff when I call your name, Miss Alexander, Tawana and Alexander, who is a business teacher at Captain Shreve High School. We have Miss Tia Johnson Young, who is a business teacher at Woodlawn High School. And Miss Catherine Harris, who is a business teacher also at Woodlawn. Our intern this year, our student intern, who is a graduate of this camp, it's Jayla Lewis, and Jayla is a sophomore at Bird High School. Uh, we have also Mr. Thaddeus P, who is a legislative assistant to Representative Burrell. So on behalf of Representative Burrell and the rest of the ICE staff, I want to say thank you so much for your support. I especially thank those of you, like Ms. Stephanie Mitch and others, uh, Mr. Woodrow Wilson, who have served as judges and given us other support uh, services throughout the year. I will now um, ask our student to come and give you special thanks. Good evening, Caddo Parish Commissioners. My name is Chelsea Smith, and I live at 1622 Templeman Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. On behalf of all 42 Biz Camp students and staff, we take this opportunity to thank you for your support. We are enjoying a wonderful time at camp learning how to own and operate our own businesses. Not only are we learning how to become successful employers, we are also learning how to become great employees. We aim to make you and the entire parish of Caddo very proud. Please accept these t-shirts as a small token of our appreciation to you. Thank you. Ms. Lynch, are you still on the board from last time? Or this no, that's me. Um, I just want to congratulate um, 
the Biz Camp program again for another successful year. I guess the majority of, of uh, kids that I see that are in you all's age range is over at our juvenile detention center, uh, locked behind uh, steel doors. And I think it's certainly commendable that you all have uh, decidedly taken another path to try to be productive members of society, uh, getting your education and moving into the uh, business arena. So you all are definitely be, to be commended for that, and you all keep going, stay on the right path. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, give you a minute to do that. Thank you. This will let this on. Thank you. Another week. Oh, okay. What did you do? Just good. You're doing a great job. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. You need to get out more so you don't feel like you're here. I'm not the largest group I see. Who? The largest group I see uh -huh. together. Okay, reports. Really? Oh, yes, I do. President Tippetoe, we have the commissioner. We have two items to need to cover with you all. Uh, Mr. Weaver, come forward and you give us an update on our permit process. Good afternoon, commissioner. I just want to update y'all on our, it, this is just one bill of our uh, permits. It's our building permits. And as y'all are aware, Back in 2005, uh, they passed a law that every building had to be inspected. And then in 2007, it, it became effective it was through Act 12. And we applied for some grants because the people out in the uh, parish, you know, had not been used to this, this cost on an average permit which there's been a lot of third parties which has brought the cost down. You know, when, when it first came out, everybody thought a permit was going to be $5,000, and they're, they're down to about $1,000. But what we did, we entered into a contract with the city of Shreveport, and we've been supplementing the permits. Like, in the parish, the permit's only $30, and this is just for HVAC, plumbing, building, and electrical. You have to get your initial permit for the plan review, and each time the plumber comes out there in the city, I mean, in the the city only charges parish customers thirty dollars, but but in the city it's sixty five dollars. I guess what I'm coming to tell y'all now is the grant money is going to run out September thirty first, so the permits are going to go back up to what the city is charging at sixty five dollars. And this is comparable to the Soda Parish and Bossier Parish. So basically the citizens have, have realized in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, and almost all of 2011 about $230,000 savings. So if y'all don't know if y'all have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Mr. Donovan? Yeah. Um, what kind of, would we have some type of federal grant that was helping? It was a I state guess. grant that Mr. Lucky helped us get. And that's not available anymore? No. no. So we had a um, $370,000 grant. We bought trucks and some supplies to stand up the operation. And the remaining portion of that money, we were able to reduce the cost of inspections. And that money was a one-time deal, and it's, we were running out of it. So it's not renewable. It was state money. <clears throat> and um, this is... So yeah, there's going to be an increase in cost beginning September on those permits. Uh, when they, when they, probably in, in, I said September 31st. Probably we, it's probably going to be somewhere in we'll just say August first. Oh, you said it was uh, initially about thousand dollars for the permit, but you said it was thirty five for the the HVAC, the electrical, plumbing. The right. the initial one is that the one that costs so much for the no, plan review or what? The, the initial one is, up, is, is somewhere it's around twelve cents. It's around two or three hundred. Where's the thousand dollars? I mean, it'd be two or three hundred dollars plus. There's about thirteen inspections at sixty five dollars inspection. Okay, so it's multiple times. Right. Is it going to? How much is ultimately going to come up to? Is it going to double or? Probably on a on a twenty five hundred square foot house, it'll it'll be about four hundred, a little over four hundred and fifty dollars more. 
And what they're, then what they're paying a thousand, they're only placing close to fifteen hundred dollars. No, instead of paying about six hundred, they'll be paying a thousand. So. Well, ago you said <laughs> the average was a thousand. So I said that's what it is. Like if you're in the city, okay, the Soda Parish or Bossier Parish. Okay. So, right, like I say, right now, if you want to build something, better get it done now. Yeah, I mean, but they're gonna be they'll be charged the same amount. It's not gonna be more than the city. Or, or our neighboring parishes. I mean, they... they you don't want to give us a break up there and give them or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just want grass to get up there. Yeah, right. All right, now. <laughs> I just wanted to... Tell them they can't just hit somebody. I just wanted to update y'all because I know some of the rural parishes are, you know, you're going to probably get some calls. <clears throat> but we're going to do some public notices through the newspaper and we'll put signs up in the city permit office when they get... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We're, we're going to try to give them notice between now and, and August 1st. All the developers, which is, you know, the different ones are going to have to... Most of the developers, like the ones in Blanchard, yeah. you know, they don't, they don't utilize our services or the city services. They use a third party. Okay. So they're already paying, you know, $1,000 to $1,100. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Lynch. Can you sit this to me in writing so I don't have to ask a bunch of questions? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll do that. All right, any, uh, yes, I have one more item, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Saber? You come forward? Saber is here to give us an update on the film business in our community. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, in front of you have uh, a couple of pages of um, economic development information, giving our rankings, and it also gives the rankings of the state. We also have um, a list year by year starting, and this is um, you know, right after Katrina, starting at the end of 2005, and then uh, 2011, this is what we have so far this year. And then um, also Randy passed out our newest brochure, so I wanted you guys to look at this because we actually had to expand this a little bit because of the infrastructure growth that we have here to include um, Millennium Studios Worldwide FX, Brady Blade Studios, um, Moonbot Studios, and it goes on and on. But I'm real proud. Um, the numbers this year we have um, so far, we've had uh, nine movie and television projects with budgets totaling over 40 million so far for the year. We've had 4,702 hotel motel room nights booked. 245 production days, 371 crew positions were created, and 316 round-trip air tickets from Shreveport or either DFW to LAX or Burbank. So I um, wanted to give you guys an update, and I want to thank you all for your support. I mean, I couldn't ask for better staff and your support when we call and we have film needs, whether it's maps or I call Larry Raymond to get permission to go into the parks to scout and or shoot. So I want to thank, personally thank you. And um, Oh, the magazine uh, is our Louisiana Film and Video Magazine. Pam Glorioso is my partner. She represents Bossier City. So they did a little article on us, too. It, it's in, in the magazine. So do y'all have any questions? Um, yeah. um, Yes, Avery. Did you touch base about the contract that was just signed, I believe, with ABS, CBS Sports, and Blade Studios? I don't have the details on the contract, but um, we got a phone call to help uh, with that, and um, I did refer them to Blade Studios, and I understand they have signed a contract and will hopefully be there soon doing a live broadcast. Um, and I forgot the sports guys. Um, it, it, he's a Shreveporter. Yeah, uh, Brando. Brando. Tim Brando. Tim Brando. It's for Tim. Tim does um, a live radio show every day. So, um, but they'll be broadcasting uh, live from Shreveport and, and Brady Play Studios. Sports guy. <coughs> well, well, good things are happening, and uh, we're hoping to get our numbers up this year. Um, there's a lot of things that um, cause us to be down this year. We, we do not have direct flights to Los Angeles and or Burbank. We're, we're still trying to do that, and that would help us big time. Has there been any conversation with Allegiant Air in regard to the flights that they have from, from California to Las Vegas to where people would not be forced off the plane? I know that it would take communications between the city of Shreveport 
in the city of Las Vegas. I believe that the contract states that if an Allegiant Air lands in, in Las Vegas, the person has to get off the airplane and they have to spend the night in Las Vegas before they are allowed back on in the airplane for a second for a second trip. If, if please correct me if that's if that's. I, not I'm right. not aware of that and, uh, rule, and it, that rule, but um, you know there has been discussions with Allegiant. You know for. Did it, did I mean if they could just go from Los Angeles yeah. to Las Vegas, sit on the airplane for a second, and then fly to Shreveport. How how would those how are those talks going, or are they initiated, or has or would there you has do been that? several discussions, but um, there is another airline that the the guys at the airport are courting right now. So hopefully we'll have some good news soon. They're working on something, and we're hoping it happens because to be honest with you, I just flew into Burbank. I'd rather fly into Burbank than. In LAX any day because of the size of the airport and uh, most of the studios are in the Burbank area where we make you know calls when we go out there that makes it real convenient for us what what um, competitive markets have recently voted down the, the tax renewal that, that Louisiana continued and what are you doing to go to those market areas to draw them back into this back into the ARCLA tax? We actually um, New Mexico and Michigan have just put a cap on their production tax incentives, tax credits, and that's sending production our way. Um, we, we could be, and we have three projects that are interested in westerns. I've been trying to get a western here for six years, and um, I think we're getting real close. We've got a TV series and two major movie productions looking at us for uh, westerns, and um, you know, I go all over the area, northwest Louisiana, scouting different things, and I just found a great find south of Minden that looks like the Painted Desert or something in um, Arizona. But we have rolling hills for sand and all that, so we're hoping we can get some of those New Mexico uh, projects our way. <coughs> Ms. Lynch? Are you well, finished, Ms. Lynch? That's, that's good. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to hear about the Western. I think with a hair change, I could probably apply for the Miss Kitty. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> uh, Alina, I think you really uh, found your niche in this market and, and just have done a phenomenal job oh, uh, thank with, you. with the... Uh, and anytime I can help uh, you guys or if y'all ever want to go on set, just let me know. Okay. Well, let me ask you, you, the state film tax credit, I guess there were some, uh, a couple of articles I read about the sunshine and all of that uh, where are we but at we're fine I'm we're fine, fine the so far yes but um you know we're 30 percent on the first level and five percent for louisiana higher which makes us 35 percent so, so that, we're, money that is really in good the budget right and then the other uh, new mexico and michigan now have caps and so the larger projects do not want to go there because of that okay the city film tax credit how much was expended for films say we, we have given several rebates back uh, on the city level for the Shreveport spend. Um, anywhere from one production got a, a rebate check for 101000 and then up to uh, as low as 6000 rebate. Okay. And that's based on, you know, the um, spend in the city limits of Shreveport. So that is helping, obviously. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. we passed a film, Cattle Parish. Of tax credit you as did. well. You did. Have, have I haven't had anybody apply for that, and I think it's kind of hard in the fact that um, the, the rules are with Caddo Parish uh, sales tax rebate is that it has to be within Caddo Parish outside the city limits of Shreveport, and then it can't be in other incorporated areas. So there's a lot, not a whole lot they can spend outside, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like Vivian has their own <coughs> sales tax or city. So it's, it's kind of difficult. We haven't had any ap applications for, for the cattle parish rebate. Is there some tweaking that we can do to that? Possibly. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how you would do it since you have all these jurisdictions with, you know, different sales tax. Okay. And it has to be on the un unencumbered part, right. you know, of the sales tax. Okay. Thank you. But so something much. for thought we should yeah. look at. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Aker, if we don't get rain pretty soon, you're not going to have much trouble finding dust and filler. <laughs> <laughs> we don't look like New Mexico. <laughs> no, I showed Randy in my office today some of the pictures, and um, I mean it was just like a true desert out there. Some yeah. of the photos. It looks like Louisiana. Let me say that. It looks like Louisiana. Put <laughs> the cactus out, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it, it looks, all looks good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you, Alina. Appreciate it.
Anything else? Yeah, Commissioner's out. I got it all. You know, a day from this, uh, I mean, Mayor Walker from Boulder, and they're asking us about our uh, uh, opinion on this uh, fireworks coming up on the 4th of July, whether or not to put a, a burn ban in place that would prohibit fireworks. And we're going to uh, talk to the fire chiefs in other districts to see what their thoughts are before we make a recommendation to you. But they are looking at uh, limiting that only to the Red River area. Would it be the... Uh, uh, the Red River fireworks. The program, yeah. Yes, having that only, and everybody else be prohibited from using fireworks because of the dry conditions. So as that develops, I'll let you all know what we hear from the fire districts on, on their inputs. But right now, it looks like they're looking at banning it other places around the area. Yes. Okay, uh, Ms. Wilson, for Thursday, could you have us a report on uh, Axiom and where we are with that? Yes, sir. Well, they, I believe they were supposed to give us some reports and we haven't received any any uh, communiques from uh, members of the commission no i'll be giving a report on thursday from the uh, look maybe uh quick on fishing is this weekend so if everybody gets a chance and come back to, uh, to the hooked on fish is that right mary it is this weekend it is uh, Ways and Park, it's the annual event where, you know, the children learn about fishing, boat, boating safety, uh, rotary club, or fixing hamburgers and those type of things. So, hope to see any, well, I'm not going to be able to do that. <laughs> the first time I'm going to miss it, uh, I've got off time, so. All right. Uh, any other business? Any other business? No other business. Uh, yeah, there is no other business, but there is new business. All right. New business. I will move to the I mean, items 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, including those appointments and number 6. Move those to Thursday. Okay, we've got a uh, motion and a second to include those number 2, 3, 6, including the uh, appointments. Go ahead and vote. That passes. Um, we still have Mr. Okay. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, your uh, addition. Okay. Um, before each of the commissioners, there are two letters of two people who have been uh, who, who wrote a letter into Sewer District Number Seven. Sewer District Number Seven has been without um, two board members for quite a few months, and basically we've narrowed it down to these two individuals. And today we'll try to uh, move to have these two individuals confirmed to be in on two different number seven. Uh, one name is Tom Collins. The other one is Elizabeth Miller. Oh, okay. All right. Second. Any comments? Pass your vote, please. Okay, that passes seven eight. Yes, we have a business concern agenda. Yes, sir. The motion to adjourn.